So hello everybody, it is Friday and it is time for another Dax Fridays. In today's Dax Fridays, um, we are actually, I'm, I'm going to answer a question that you asked me this week and it was, okay Ruth, you told us in the previous Dax Fridays videos that how to avoid bidirectional relationships, but you never said why we should avoid them. And I was thinking, oh, I, I have a video for that. Well, no, I don't. So. I'm going to explain it here. Why should you avoid bidirectional relationships? And uh, first of all, I want to point you to a webinar that uh, Casper, uh, his Microsoft employee, did on uh, modeling. Okay, and I'm going to link down below so you can register and watch it. I really recommend you to watch it. I watched it a while ago and uh, Here's the thing, he, you know, he goes through data modeling and, you know, the principles of it. And then suddenly he says, uh, we do have bidirectional relationships in Power BI, which are basically many to many. And I say like, oh, are you kidding? And I probably should have figured it out because a bidirectional relationship is basically a relationship that allows you to filter both tables at the same time. And I understood then the trouble you're in when you're using bidirectional relationships because you're basically activating a many to many relationship. I have already a video I would link also down below on many to many and um, in here, you will be able to um, I give a comp uh, an example of why many to many relationships are dangerous. Um, I'm going to give you another example in today's video. I'm not going to just give you links. So I am going to give you a specific example, and I really do not never ever do this when it comes to bidirectional relationships. So. If we go to Power BI, this is the Northwind data set that we always use, link down below if you want to use it too. It will be a link, download link also for this Power BI file in case you want to train yourself. So I have modified the Northwind data set a little bit. So this is our new model. So we have a, a calendar, we have a orders table, and then we have a customer table. And as you can see, our order table is what I call on previous video, a lock table, a lock table. And I'm doing like this is because, you know, the many is like your know, asterisk. So it is like, like, you know, locked from both sides. So that is basically when you want to activate um, bidirectional relationships to allow the filters to flow on the directions that you need. So every time you see these, Depending on what you're going to do, it will give you trouble and you might want to activate bidirectional relationships. So let's do some DAX. We go in here and um, we have uh, the years from the calendar and then we have put sales. Sales, nothing weird. Some to, here's not sum of sales because we have quantity and unit price. So you, you know, you need to multiply them, but sum of sales. And then I have created a sales previous year with the date add and for the specific purpose of this video and this demonstration. There are a thousand ways to create previous year. Bear with me. So what it does is it says uh, calculate sales uh, and then go back a year to do that. And this is the result. So we have from 1998, we have uh, this much, 116 million, this is 106, it's not the same as 1996 because if we go here to 1998, you'll see that it's only January to May, it's not a complete year. So for the previous year, on 1997, it's just calculated in the same month. So if we remove this filter, um, you'll see it very clear now. So if we go here, this is January, so it starts in there. And then if we go to January to, um, 1997, you'll see the same number there. You see? So those are the same. And then it goes all the way up to May. So this is why the result is only 100 million instead of 
the entire thing. But for the re- year before, for 1996, it gives us the entire year, whatever is in there. Okay? So, now, if we click on the company name, you see that everything is working correctly. Hallelujah. Now, what happens if we activate a bidirectional relationships between the calendar and our orders table? And we go back. There you go. Exactly. It took a little while. It breaks. And you like, why is it breaking? Well, sometimes these uh, error messages are helpful. Let's see what it says. It says the calculation error uh, on the orders say last year, the function date add expects a continuous selection when the date column comes from a table on the one side of a bidirectional relationship. Uh, <laughs> okay, don't worry. What it's basically telling you is it needs to be able to use date add, it needs to have all the dates in the calendar. And it doesn't have it because we activated bidirectional relationships. And these, whatever this filter gets into orders, it gets into calendar too, which means that it's only the uh, dates where there was a sale that gets transferred to the calendar table and then date had cannot work because it needs continuous data. So one of the rules for modeling is never, ever, ever, ever do a bidirectional relationships with your calendar. And this is an example of what can go wrong if you do. Okay, so once we remove these and we go back to single direction. Oh dear. Single direction, it will work. There you go. And um, we're back in business. So this is an example of how bidirectionals can break your model. Another thing that can happen in is over filtering and incorrect results. Watch Casper's video webinar is great. And he explains with very simple words, a lot of useful things about modeling. So really recommend you to watch it. Um, watch my many to many videos to see another explanation of what can go wrong. Um, do I have a rule of thumb that if you do this, except for this calendar thing, you know, in this scenario, don't use bidirectional relationships. I do not. If you do, share with us, please. I have no idea. I cannot say, just don't do this except for these that I knew from the white paper. Don't know. Because I don't know, I stay away from them. And then I'm sure that always, always, my model will work and give great results, uh, correct results, basically. So, I really hope this helps you get a little bit more understanding on bidirectional relationships and why you should use them. The same goes for many to many. Watch the video, don't use them, stay away. And now you can go back to Friday's video and see how to avoid bidirectional relationships. Probably should have started there, but hey, sorry about that. Okay, so this is all for today. I will see you again on Monday. Have a great weekend and uh, yeah, bye.